Hello students, I hope you are doing well. In the last video, we have completed the chapter Resources and Development. And uh, today, we are going to take a revision of this chapter. Let's recall what we have learned before. So, when it comes to, we have seen definition of resources. So, what we mean by resource? Definition of resource. So everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our need. So that is very basic definition which we are learning in H standard. But we are ready for provided. It is technologically accessible, economically feasible and culturally acceptable. That means things if we want to utilize it. Uh, so that should be technologically accessible, so we should know how to utilize it. More economically feasible means cost of uh, utilization of particular tree. That should be economically feasible, affordable and culturally acceptable. That means accepted by human society. That we call resource or resource. Next, we have seen human being, we human being, the center figure in this resources. Why? Because we derive various things from nature using technology and institution, we transform those things into resources. So human is a central figure in it. And uh, we have classified those various resources into different categories. So let's see about classification of resources on the basis of origin. So on the basis of origin, there are two subcategories. Biotic and abiotic. Biotic means simply living beings. So here these are obtained from parasites and have life, such as human beings. We, we are also resource, a kind of resource. Human beings, flora and fauna, fisheries, livestock, etc. We count as biotic resources. Right? Second, abiotic resources. Things are available on the planet Earth, but uh, those are non-living beings. So, all those things which are composed of non-living things are called abiotic resources like minerals, rocks, matters, water, air. Those are abiotic resources. Next, we have classification based on exhaustibility. So here are two categories, renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Renewable resources means uh, resources which can be renewed or replenished in a short period of time called renewable resources. So the resources which can be renewed or replenished by physical, chemical or mechanical process are known as renewable or replenishable resources. Either natural way or with the interference of human being, if we can reproduce or replenish resource, so that resource is called a non or renewable resource. So, for example, solar and wind energy. Here yeah, there are two categories. First, that uh, biological and second, continuous. Biological, such as uh, forest, wildlife, those are biological. And the continuous, solar, wind energy, and water, those are continuous resources. The renewable resources are further be divided into continuous or flow. Continuous or flow. Next, yeah, non renewable resources. This occur over a very long geological time. So many resources take uh, resources take millions of years. So we count that very very long uh, period of time, geological time. So those resources are called non-renewable resources. Minerals and fossil fuels are examples of such resources. So minerals, we know that the minerals take millions of years to reproduce or replenish process. Uh, as as fossil fuels, we know about fossil fuels. That is why we call that fossil fuels that actually uh, need to be uh, chemical and uh, physical process that they converted from the fossils. So we call fossil fuels, but uh, it took millions of years uh, to in convert into the current situation that we now as fossil fuel. So these resources take millions of years in their formation. Some of the resources like metal are recyclable. Yes, in non-renewable resources there are two categories. Recyclable and second non recyclable. Metals. Metals are recyclable. Uh, we can utilize, we can reuse 
many of the metals like wool. Wool is one uh, ornament. We, uh, for an example, uh, we make ornament from wool. So, do we throw one stone on a broken or a diamond or something? No. We reuse it. We decide for it. Right. So, many other, uh, other resources as well. Many other metals like uh, aluminium, like uh, iron. Right. So, we know that uh, those people have a scrap business. What do they do? They take, they purchase uh, various metals and other recyclable things from the people and uh, set the recycle. So here, renewable resources are the recyclable or non-recyclable. Now, non-recyclable, fossil fuel, crude oil, that is non-recyclable. Once we burn fuel, we cannot reuse it. Once we burn petrol from our car or our motorcycle, we cannot reuse it. That is why we call it non-recyclable. Next, here, based on ownership, classification based on ownership, means resource on by one. So on the basis of that ownership, we are categorized first individual, second community, third national, and fourth international, which we have seen in the previous video. If you have any doubt, if you want to uh, know in detail, further detail, can we watch the previous videos? Here, individual resources, resources also on privately, individually, either owned by a person or a family or a group. Many farmers own land which allocate to them by government against payment of revenue. Plantation, pasture land, ponds, water rivers are some examples of resources owned by individuals. Like a uh, house owned by your father or your family or grandfather, that is private, individual resource. Next year, community owned resources, owned by community, a group of people. So here, these, there are resources which are accessible to all the members of the community, like a playground in the village, like a garden, public garden in the city, the village uh, commons, grazing grounds, burial grounds, village ponds, like burial grounds, so cemeteries. So those are also owned by a particular community. Uh, public parks, picnic spot, spots, playgrounds in urban areas are those accessible to the community and uh, community means people, those who live there, like uh, cemetery, cemetery of a village or cemetery of uh, an urban area that is limited to the people, the, those who reside in that particular area. So here, what we call that community on resources. Next year, national resources. Technically, all the resources belong to the nation, even on by particular one that is also that we call national resource. The country has legal powers to acquire even private property or public goods. Suppose uh, you have a farm, you have a land and crude oil or any other minerals or other resource found there, you cannot utilize it for the government has right to take it. Yet, government will pay some compensation, but the uh, government has a right to acquire it. So, ultimately, all the resources, even private individual resources or community resources, ultimately on by the nation. So, here, you might have seen roads, canals, railways being constructed on things owned by some individuals, like an example of uh, super highways here in our region as well as metro. So, land acquired by the government. Even people will have wanted to sell the um, doesn't matter. If they have to sell the government, yes, the government pays fair price. <laughs> All the minerals, water resources, products, wildlife, land within political boundary, political boundary of the country. And uh, political boundary, as we have seen in the previous two types of boundaries, land boundary and the second portion of the boundary. So, Oceanic boundary can be found. Nautical miles is equal to 22.2 km. From the coast term as territorial water and resources therein belong to the region. So resources belong in the land boundary as well as oceanic area as all the resources belong to the nation. Next, international resources. The oceanic resources beyond 200 nautical miles of the exclusive economic zone belong to open ocean and no individual country can utilize without the 
presence of international institution. There are some international institution. They have all they organize it actually they run it. They don't own it actually, but they manage such international resources. So, such, uh, for an example, any of the countries of the world uh, wants to utilize the resource, they have to take permission from the international organization. Then after they can utilize it, permission granted. So, what do you call that? International resources. Next, classification based on the status of development. First, potential resources. That what do we use? Word potential. What is uh, potential? Means uh, does not utilize it. But it has potential. It has uh, scope, chances, right? That we refer potential. So here, potential resources. Resources which are found in reason. Resources are available, but have not been utilized. Have not been utilized due to various factors. For example, the western part of India, particularly Rajasthan and Gujarat, have enormous potential for the development of wind and solar energy. But so far, this has not been developed properly due to certain reasons. But in future, we utilize it with our technology enough. We know how to utilize it. So here we call potential resources. Potential means the chances are there. Scope is uh, scopes are there. But to get to certain reasons, not utilize them today. Those are the potential resources. Next, developed resources. Very simple. Resources which are developed, we know how to use them as the actually we are using in the best possible way. Those resources are developed resources. So here resources which are surveyed and their quality and quantity have been determined for utilization. The development of resources depend on technology and labor of visibility. For an example, crude oil. Uh, in the most of the reason that we know that uh, availability of crude oil and uh, in the both manner availability means quantity as well as quality of crude oil. We know how and we have technology enough. We know that uh, how to utilize in the best possible way and those ways are feasible to us. So those resources are known as developed resources. Next here is stock. Here are differences between potential and development. There is a clear line between potential and development. Potential means resources which has not been utilized and developed resources being utilized. There is the basic difference. Now stock. Materials in the environment which have the potential to satisfy our need. Here the word again the word potential. So it has potential to satisfy human needs. But human needs do not have the appropriate technology to access this. In potential resources we have seen that uh, we have enough technology to utilize it but due to certain factors have not been utilized. But uh, in stock, in case of stock, we don't know how to use it. Even we have technology enough but still we don't know so, uh, that how to utilize it the best possible way. Uh, possibly that uh, technology is not feasible to us. There are certain factors. So that is why what we call not have the appropriate technology to access this. Are uh, included among, for example, water is compound of two inflammable gases, oxygen and extremely high inflammable gas, hydrogen. So which can be used as a rich source of energy. Hydrogen, that is the future fuel. Still uh, many of the scientists and many of the people expect hydrogen as future fuel. But we do not have the required technology. We know that uh, those gases can be utilized as a source of energy. But uh, unfortunately, we do not have developed technology. We uh, do not know how to utilize these resources. So, <coughs> what we call stock. Next year, reserves. Reserves now again related to developed resources. So, reserves are the subset of the stock which can be put into use with the help of existing technical know-how. So stop, things are there and we know how to utilize them. Things are available as well.
well as we know how to utilize them, right? So their uh, problem that we actually not problem, but uh, their matter is we keep such resources for our future needs. That is called reserve. So this can be used for meeting our future requirements, like uh, we need them for river and we preserve some, sorry, conserve some water for our future need. River water can be used for generating hydroelectric power, but presently it is being utilized on the limited extent. Why we don't use? Because we keep about future needs. Like uh, monsoon is coming, right? During monsoon, that uh, level of reservoir will get higher, but we won't utilize in the possible way, maximum way. Rather, we prefer to keep it. We keep prefer to keep the reserve by for the summer for the dry season right? we call reserve it is being utilized only to a limited extent thus water in dams, forests etc is a reserve which can be used in the future like uh, many of the reserve like fossil fuel we keep certain reserves for future need so those become in future so here we have seen Class uh, meaning of resources and classification of resources. Reason of uh, upcoming chapter, uh, sorry, upcoming topics will take in next videos. Thank you. Stay tuned. See you soon.